I'm Caroline Wiseman, and I am the, a co-curator for Alive in the Universe, and, um, which was at last year, this time last year, at the Venice Biennale. And now I'm going to interview one of those artists who participated, called David Baldry, who is actually co-curator with me. But so he had these two roles, didn't you, David? I did indeed, yeah. Here I yeah, am. Yeah, the two um. roles, as both co-curator with me and choosing the artists with me, the 28 artists, so we had one artist each day, and then you, we chose you. You were chosen as one of no, the artists. By you, I have to say, not by me. <laughs> <laughs> so you were chosen as one of the artists. And the whole idea was that we were, the artists were thinking about what does it feel like to be alive in the universe. Mm -hmm. And I, we gave everyone these big kind of um, big themes, didn't we? It was love or it was hate or it was, you know, desire. Yours was, what was it? Was it the, what was yours? You know. Do you know, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the title of yours, which was Endgame. Endgame, Endgame. Exactly. So it must have been something to do with... with life or death or something death, like that. Yeah. Wasn't it? So tell us a bit more. And it was a fabulous piece. Uh, it was a video piece. And of course, you've been you know, known as a sculptor. Um, as well as a wonderful artist, and I can see one of your works behind you there now. So well, only only a, only a beginning of one. It's a it's a it's a start. It's, it's, a, it's a first coat. It's so um, tell us how you then you end time. Tell us all about that piece you did for this time last year at the Venice Biennale. Well, that really came about because of the stimulus of being invited to do it, um, and I I, I I like projects which which happen because of an invitation. They're not from me, they're not my sort of core work. They're things which, um, you know, are often quite different. They, there are themes in them, I think, and the circle here is the circle of life. And, and I think, you know, I was doing a bit of traveling last year or before Alive in the Universe, and, you know, some things just kind of begin to emerge as important. And so through, in this particular case, I was in Morocco visiting my daughter, and we were driving along and I suddenly realized that there was this kind of incredible journey sort of ahead of me, which was unfolding. And that represented the way that, you know, we unfold our lives from birth mm -hmm. to death. And I started thinking maybe slightly morbidly about, you know, the way we are all, you know, inevitably going to finish our lives one day. Um, not too soon, I hope. Um, but that's where it came from and so I, I took a lot of footage there and I then did some other journeys um, you know in Scotland and other places and linked all these things together and because we because of the venue I'd seen the venue it was a split screen one screen two screens and so one screen had um, had this speeded up version of a journey quite a long journey going very very fast and the other screen had a slowed down 20 second excerpt. So 20 seconds, but 20 seconds slowed down to two and a half minutes. Uh, and the other one was two and a half minutes, but speeded up. And that was from about two hours of footage. So yeah. you went on this helter skelter, you know, incredible fast journey. And as you sat in front of it, you saw your life disappearing in yeah. front of you in yeah. a rapid way. And it was quite giddy. And, and I think yes. most people who uh, in front of it, absolutely bang up against it. So you're in the front of the, the car, driving hell for leather down this very sort of wiggly road. And you know, I think it was quite, um, it was nauseating. It was, it was made, it made you It was it. thrilling, actually. I describe it as being thrilling. It was great. It was and thrilling. Well, yeah. We showed it here, didn't we? We showed it as part of time and timelessness. We did, we did indeed, yes. We did indeed. And yes. how did you feel seeing it again the second time? I feel good. I mean, the venue was different and, you know, the positioning of people was different. We couldn't have the bench seats, right, you know, so as if you were in the front row of the cinema, which was, you know, which is a shame in a way, but it was, it was different. And again, it was received very well by the people um, who, 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 who looked at it. And, you know, it elicited quite a lot of questions from, from the audience that were there, uh, which was, which is always good. And it makes you, you know, a year on, it makes you, I guess, I thought about it probably slightly differently. And also people came up to me, maybe in a way that they didn't in Venice, oddly enough, with experiences they'd had about 
their own lives and in two cases in time timelessness um mm. people who had just lost um parents actually lost parents yeah and it made them think about their their sort of relationship well their relationship in life with their own um, mortality i suppose um, so tell me then how that's informed your work now what are you doing now tell us your projects that you are it, doing it in my lockdown work at all. right now it was, what a, are you doing? It, was a, it was a complete one-off well, I've been, well, maybe it did inform it a little bit in that I've been, for the first time ever, well, and maybe go back a little bit, we've not long ago moved to a new house where we've established new studios. And so since Alive in, uh, in, in the Universe, I've been in my studio. And when you've been out of uh, practice for a little while, um, for me anyway, you think, you think immediately you're going to go back to the same place you left off. And of course, that's not possible because you're a different person, time has elapsed and you can't go back to the same place. So I came to the studio, thought, yep, yeah, I know what I'm going to do and ended up doing something completely different, which Ooh. was what figurative. Was that? Tell us. It was figurative. Well, it was, well, I mean, it was also something which I've always had a problem with, which was life drawing. Although I you know, did life drawing as an art student and eventually ended up teaching life drawing um, in art schools. Uh, I could never quite see the point unless it related specifically to your work. You know, if you're a figurative painter, let's say, or a figurative sculptor, mm -hmm. you would do drawings of the human figure. Of course you mm -hmm. would. Anyway, so I started making drawings of me, in fact, because I was there. Oh. You know, I, I was, I was, These uh, are life drawings of you? These are life drawings of me. Okay. Um, okay. But they're, they're, not, they're not normal life drawings because most of me is absent. I was so going to say, you have your clothes on or off, David? My clothes were off. <laughs> but they you can't off. see anything. You can't see anything. I could see it all, but nobody else could. <laughs> <laughs> I have a place with that. But, um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so, but it was all to do with me disappearing. You know, I thought, as a, you know, as a person, as an artist, I was interested in not being sort of, you know, kind of a big star, but actually thinking about how one just disappears through, 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 through life and um, you know I'm so anyway I started making these drawings which were about rubbing out taking away okay. so they started off as me as life drawings and then they became less and less about Ooh. they were still life drawings uh, and then uh, some things happened and I started introducing a more of a narrative to them um, which was quite personal and I enjoyed them and I think it was cathartic but it's probably not what I wanted to do right. and then um, because I think you can probably just see them here look I've got lots of um, cactus and plants and you know I'm interested in gardening and gardens uh, yeah. yeah probably interested in plants more than gardening uh, to be honest and um, I started making drawings of some of the some of the cactus in my studio but just again because they were there and I wasn't sure what I was doing so I thought I've got to be occupied Mm -hmm. You know, being in a studio, being an artist, sometimes you just have to chip away at it and see kind of where it, where it, where it takes you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are, I don't know whether you can see them on the wall there, mm -hmm. some of the things um, that I began to make. Um, which actually, really, I just got out today because I wanted to look at the surface. They're done in different materials. And so because of what I'm doing here, I wanted to look at the surfaces of different, 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 different um, inks and different chalks and things. Um, yeah. uh, anyway, so these were kind of back to making things which are circular, which is again, I think, probably about the circle of life. It's about you know, the way the seasons come and seasons go, and the way we're you know, we're born, we come into the world, and we go out the other end. But in the meantime, we produce children and grandchildren and all that stuff. Lovely. So, so would you say, David, then somehow then your experience of Alive in the Universe at the Venice Biennale, has it been um, a big, useful experience for you? To, are you thinking about the bigger issues than you were before? Possibly, and possibly, of course, because of, you know, the, the world we live in currently, um, mm -hmm. you know, the COVID-19 world. Um, Thinking about the big picture, the big, the, the big picture, and also the, the way it affects us. You know, for instance, I, you know, today it's the first of May. I can't believe a year ago, exactly today, we were on the plane going to Venice. Where, weren't we? And 
you know, this is something which is just not possible anymore. You can't even book a flight to Venice, even if you wanted to go there. And it's completely empty. Um, and, and in the foreseeable future, we're not going to be able to do those no, things. No, no, uh, and that's that there, kind so. of extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Um, so it has, you know, the world has changed significantly. And so now, you know, we're, we live in the middle of the countryside, um, surrounded by trees and nature. So our world is quite isolated anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And so this you... is, you know, this is, so I suppose that affects the way you think a little bit. And so maybe we've all, all become a little bit insular and a bit isolated and a bit... Um, and a bit more introspective. Maybe yeah. we've become a bit more introspective. I think so, definitely. Because it's, it's, it's the only place to look now. You can only look inside, <laughs> which is not necessarily a great place to look, of course. Oh. <laughs> But David, um, thank you so much, David, for chatting to you. That was really lovely. And onwards and upwards with a live okay. in lockdown. Okay. No more questions? <laughs> no. Good. <laughs>